Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Can I please ask you to take your seats? Oh, you're missing a speaker? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, or welcome for those of you who were not yet with us this morning. I hope you had a pleasant break. I hope you had opportunities to meet one another, start many of the important discussions that are going to take place over the next 36 hours. I am just checking whether you hear me because I've had some signals. OK, thank you. Um, so, as announced this morning, we will start our exploration of the global gateway through the regional lens and our journey is first going to take us to Central Asia. I'm sorry, I'm taking this off because I have French interpretation in my ears while speaking English. It makes it a bit complicated. Um, so, we will start our journey through Central Asia and in to, to introduce uh, this discussion and lead you through the no doubt fruitful exchanges, it's my pleasure to hand over to my fellow moderator, Siobhan Hall. Siobhan is at the back there. I think she has a, 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 a mic issue. So <laughs> just, a just a little technical glitch. She will be with us in a minute and she will invite all of you uh, speakers here on stage to discuss Central Asia. So bear with us for a minute. <laughs> there we go, Siobhan is on her way. So I'll leave you in her good hands to lead this discussion. Uh, my name is Siobhan Hall. I am the moderator for this session. And I'm having some slight technical details, uh, difficulties, but I would like to invite all our speakers to come on the stage and take their seats. Please, thank you very much. Ah. 
So thank you very much for being, for being patient. Uh, we're having some, some technical difficulties, but I hope they will soon stop. Um, I would like to start by introducing the speakers. And I think I'm going to need some more technical help on the stage. So I'm going to carry on introducing the speakers, and I need someone's help. So <laughs> I'm so sorry about this. Um, so our first, our first speaker today will be the Commissioner for International Partnerships, who is, uh, as, as I'm sure you all know, Jutta Erpilainen. We're very pleased to have her here. And then uh, we are extremely honored to have so many representatives from Central Asia here in person. And we really appreciate you making the journey and being here with us. And, with us. Um, and they include the Deputy Prime Minister for Uzbekistan, who is also the Minister of Tourism and Culture. And that is His Excellency Aziz Abdul Um And then we have the Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Tajikistan, who is is Manali Ismanzoda. Thank you very much for coming. And then we have the uh, Minister of Transport and Communications of Kyrgyzstan, and that is Erkenbek Osyev. And then we have from uh, Kazakhstan, we have the Chairman of the Agency for Strategic Planning and Reforms, and that is Mr. Asit Galiev. And then finally, from the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, we have Mr. Mark Bowman. Now, I'm still having some technical problems. Please bear with me. Um, we, will have, we will start with some interventions, but it will be possible to ask questions. And I would like to ask everyone in the room to use the Slido app. If you're not familiar with it, I'm sure you've seen instructions around the, uh, the venue. But if you could use the Slido app to register your questions, we are, if you put in EDD22 and look for the red dot, you will find the, the place to put your questions in. And we hope to have some Q&A at the end. So please put your questions in. Even if you're in the room, please put your questions in. Um, you do need a headset to hear what's going on. You need a headset to hear what's going on, <laughs> basically. So with that, I would very much like to ask uh, the commissioner to take the floor and uh, give us an introduction about how the Global Gateway impacts uh, Central Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you today to this very special event on Global Gateway in Central Asia. In November last year, we, European Union and the Central Asian leaders, we met in Dushanbe. The EU's message was very clear. We are partners and ready to support Central Asian countries on political reform on the road towards environmental sustainability and human development. And ever since then, this message has become even more important. In December, the EU launched its new sustainable connectivity strategy, Global Gateway. Global Gateway aims to boost smart, clean and secure links in the digital, climate, energy and transport sectors. Under the Global Gateway, we want to strengthen health, education and research systems across the world. Global Gateway really puts people and values at the center. It tackles inequalities by building inclusive and sustainable societies. Bridging the world's infrastructure investment gap and achieving the infrastructure-related sustainable development goals while staying on track to limit climate change and environmental degradation would require an investment of 1.3 trillion euros per year. So the question is, how will Global Gateway address this challenge? We are currently planning with our member states and the European finance institutions a regional Team Europe initiative for Central Asia on water, energy and climate change. 
So together, we want to improve regional integrated world energy resources management and foster investments for a green transition. The initiative will support the strengthening of the Central Asia regional power system and the mainstreaming of climate change in all our action, actions related to water, energy and the environment. The recent Dushanbe Water Conference was a good opportunity to take stock on this. We will also foster increased digital connectivity in Central Asia through a regional Team Europe initiative. So that will be another Team Europe initiative. Central Asia is one of the latest uh, uh, and least digitally connected regions in the world. But we believe that its geographic location and young population definitely give it the potential to fully harness the opportunities for digitalization, for growth and human development. The European Union is therefore preparing an initiative to increase the number of people connected to the global internet in Central Asia while also providing for inclusive and sustainable connectivity based on international and European standards. In only a few months, we have already made a long way together. We will need all on board. We need partner countries, so countries from Central Asia. We need our member states, European Union member states. We also need civil society, participation, and we definitely need also the private sector. So I really look forward to hearing from you and discussing how we can move even faster together with these two initiatives I just presented. Thank you very much. Well, I think that was an excellent introduction to some of the themes that we are going to uh, cover today. And now I would like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister of Uzbekistan to uh, make his notes. We, you have um, seven minutes and you should be able to see your time uh, counting down. Your Excellency, Madam Commissioner, Rupilainen, and their participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the President of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Shavkat Mirziyoyev, I would like to express my gratitude for the invi invitation for the European Development Days as a part of the separate session dedicated to Central Asia. The head of the state has personally entrusted me to take part in this important event and I was also asked to send his best wishes to the leadership of European Union and all participants of this event. Uzbekistan has supported the EU initiative the strengthening connectivity global gateway since its inception, given that it is also fully aligned with the development strategy of New Uzbekistan for 2022-26. At the end of this year, we are planning to hold an EU Central Asia Ministerial Conference in Samarkand. This event will become a continuation of today's forum and will allow us to have a more comprehensive discussion, setting connectivity between EU and Central Asia, as well as exploring further cooperation opportunities across, the, across development issues. The European Union is a trusted and on one of the key partners of Uzbekistan. The Uzbek government highly appreciates the EU firm and consistent support for the reform processes taking place in our country. Relations between Uzbekistan and EU reached a new level in recent years, acquiring a comprehensive and multidimensional character. Among some of the most notable achievements in multilateral cooperation are Uzbekistan receiving a GSP plus beneficiary status, Negotiation on enhancing partnership and cooperation agreement are at their final stage. Active joint work is underway on Uzbekistan's accession to WTO. Bilateral trade grew by 22.6%. It's almost 1.9 billion US dollars since the beginning of this year. About 1,000 joint ventures and projects have been implemented over the past few years. The EU, one of the main donors, 
to the UN multi-partner trust fund for human security for the RLC region, estimated 5.2 million euros. The European Investment Bank and the French Development Agency are designing a project to improve the environmental situation in the RLC region worth 150 million euros. The Uzbek government welcomes the EU initiatives on the digitalization, water use, energy and climate change in Central Asia through the Team Europe Assistance Mechanism. To add to this, at present, we are working on the organization of the EU Central Asia Tourism Forum in Hiva with the purpose of supporting the post-pandemic recovery of the tourism sector. It is undoubted that the rapid global change and crisis are posing serious challenges for the developing world. These challenges require joint action in order to advance resistance to external shocks. Global crisis requires a collective response by eliminating barriers and paying a special attention to the protection of vulnerable people. This has been one of the key priorities of the EU strategy for Central Asia endorsed in 2019. The government of Uzbekistan in convinced that improving of interconnectedness of Central Asia with the other part of the world will play an important role in ensuring prosperity and sustainability of our region. Thus, it is imperative that the current and prospective joint projects and programs with EU consider as the needs and priorities of countries of our region. Taking this opportunity, I would like to outline Uzbekistan's position on the Global Gateway Initiative in the concise points, seven concise points. Proposals of the initiative should be aimed at the supporting regional projects pertaining to trade and investment low carbon energy, water use, and digitalization. Priority should be given to the development of new transport corridors connecting Central Asia with the South Asia and Europe, including through South Caucasus, Trans-Caspian International Transport Route. The latter is closely linked to the EU strategy on connecting Europe and Asia of 2018. We consider it important to develop a regional program on the creation of the transport system in Central Asia, similar to the Trans-European Transport Network, TEN-T. Joint measures to address food security issues and explore ways to mitigate the negative impact of rising world prices, as well as establish novel cooperation approach in the production and processing of agricultural products are imperative. Effective steps should be taken toward inclusive transition to green economy, introduction of innovations and digital technologies, as well as infrastructural modernization. Fighting climate change, environmental and biodiversity protection should be become a priority. This is especially relevant to light of the lesson learned from the RLC environment disaster. Through the EUSA platform, the Uzbek government deems it necessary to accelerate cooperation on water resources, environmental protection and climate change, as well as the start preparation for the high-level EU Central Asia Conference on Environmental and Water Resources, planned for October 2022 in Rome. On this note, the Uzbek government counts the extra support from the Trust Fund for RLC region. It is necessary to invest in capacity building programs, supporting large-scale education and health reforms. The government of Uzbekistan is interested in inspecting, expanding cooperation with the EU through Erasmus Plus and Horizon Europe educational programs. Security and sustainable development of Central Asia is in many ways depend on the peace and stability in the neighboring Afghanistan. Therefore, the Afghan problem should be consistently in the center of our attention. Uzbekistan believes that the expansion of humanitarian aid to Afghanistan and the unfreezing of its financial assets abroad is highly important, along with the assistance in the implementation of major infrastructure projects such as the Termes Mazari Sharif Kabul Peshawar Railway and the Surhan Puli Kumri Power Line. Ladies and gentlemen, the Uzbek government believes that the aforementioned measures will help in enhancing connectivity of Central Asia region and its sustainable development, as well as facilitate effective implementation of Global Gateway Initiative. We are committed to a regular information exchange, knowledge sharing, 
deepening cooperation and joint action in ensuring practical and effective implementation of the EU initiative in strengthening further cooperation between Uzbekistan and European Union. Thank you for your attention and looking forward to seeing you soon in Samarkand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much. And, uh, and I think that was a really useful also um, overview where you mentioned several of the pillars that the commissioner mentioned there on uh, transport and energy and digitalization. So that was a really interesting um, intervention. And now it's my great pleasure to pass the floor to the Deputy Prime Minister of Tajikistan. And I understand you may have some, you have some slides. Um, if we could have these um, slides, please. Your Excellency, Commissioner Urpilainen, uh, my colleague from Central Asia, dear participants, let me start with a special thanks to European Commission and Commissioner Urpilainen for organizing today timely discussion on how to build a strong, sustainable and resilient partnership for the future between the European Union and Central Asia. On behalf of President of the Republic of Tajikistan, Emmanuel Rahman, express my gratitude to the European Commission for organizing this impressive event and for providing a great occasion to discuss opportunities for cooperation between the Republic of Tajikistan and the European Union in the field of energy and beyond. Before taking more in detail about energy interconnectivity in Central Asia and beyond, let me put the topic in a broader context. Tajikistan is a minor contributor to global greenhouse gas emission, account for 0.3 thousand percent of global emission. Because we have a hydropower dominated electricity system with hydropower plants account 95% of total energy generation. Tajikistan has significant utilized hydropower resources around 520 billion kilowatt hours. 5% of the total potential has been developed to date. By combining hydropower and other renewable energy source, we can make our energy system more balanced uh, and realizing against climate change. Yet our country has significant potential to contribute to global CO2 emission reduction. For example, we have estimated that completion of construction of Rogun hydropower plant, a large hydropower plant with storage which is under construction, would help to displace gas and coal-fired generation in Central Asia region and beyond. We estimated that in 2022 and 2040, Ragun project can reduce CO2 emission by about 22 million tons. Hydropower will play increasingly largest role to promote decarbonization to entire Central Asia region by offering other services to all countries, including ability to contribute for larger integration of solar PV and wind resources. Water resources, including for energy production, are decreasing year by year. We are home to some of the largest glaciers in the world, which are now melted and alarm rate. Today, according to experts, the glaciers have lost 30 percent of their volumes in the past decades. Therefore, decarbonization of the increasing importance. It is an against this background that we have taken the lead of several global initiatives related to water, such as 2003 Water for, of Fresh. 2005-2015, International Decade for Action Water for Life, 2013, International Year of Water Cooperation, and most recently, the International Decade for Action Water for Sustainable Development, 2018-2028. 
this was renewable energy resources put Tajikistan in key position when it comes in boosting the green energy transition to in Central Asia and beyond. Our energy export to neighboring countries about 3 billion kilowatt hours per year. So far we born exporting electricity to Afghanistan and Uzbekistan and we are working to expand this to other regional countries. Several efforts are underway in this regard. The CASA 1000 project, supported by, amongst others, the European Investment Bank, World Bank, and European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, will connect the country energy system of Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, allowing the transfer of green excess energy to Pakistan through Afghanistan. Three weeks ago, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan launched a joint project for the construction of two hydropower plants with total capacity 320 megawatt in the Zarafshan River. We have very two big projects for rehabilitation Nurek hydropower plant and construction new Sebzor, where participate financing from European Investment Bank and another financial institute. And then we have the Ragun hydropower project. The project can be uh, game changing when it comes to spring and green energy transition in Central Asia in BN. With a planning uh, generation capacity 3,600 megawatt coming exclusively from hydropower resources, the project will contribute to the global gateway uh, climate and energy driver, which focuses on the transition of clean energy, with the involved contractor being mainly European company, for example, Siemens, Andres, we build tractable engineering, and another, we are assumed to have a highest possible standard and most innovative technology available. By providing clean, secure, and reliable electricity, not only within Tajikistan, but also to other countries in the region, the project will contribute to achieving the goals under the Paris Agreement and the well and the 2030 agenda. The project will increase energy security, both economic growth and bring social benefit in Tajikistan and, and region as whole. The project will be fundamental for one of the core principle of the global gateway interconnectivity as it will both electricity, trade and regional energy integration with the Central Asia region. This will enhance cooperation between Central Asia countries and help sustainable uh, regional stability. For this project now we sign memorandum between Republic of Tajikistan and Republic of Uzbekistan and on the signature memorandum between Tajikistan and Kazakhstan for energy export from Ragun project during summer period started from May until September, around uh, three, four billion kilowatt hours. Very important project for Tajikistan, it is Project CASA. In, uh, during summer period started from May until uh, September from Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan will be exported around 5 billion kilowatt hours energy. Very important question today, connection Tajikistan electricity with Central Asia and South Asia. Now on the construction, very important project for connection Central Asia with South Asia with Afghanistan. Now transmission line 500 kV between Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, Polikhumri and the construction. 500 kV transmission line between Turkmenistan and Polikhumri, Afghanistan in the final stage. Two single 200 kV transmission line from Tajikistan to Afghanistan already unloaded and under consideration. 500 kV transmission line between Tajikistan, Ragun to Polikhumri, Afghanistan. We now make a lot of effort for connection between Tajikistan and uh, all Central Asia and South Asia for one single energy network and for organization all uh, export to uh, 
south part to Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, to conclude, uh, I would like to express the uh, hope that this high level event will future strengthen the mutually benefits economic cooperation between the countries of the region and the European Union and also thank European, European side for the warm welcome and for creating the necessary condition for successful organization of this forum. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, and thank you also for the words of thanks there, and some clearly some very interesting energy interconnection activities going on in, in Central Asia, something which is very close to the European Union's heart as well. So thank you very much. And our, our next speaker is from Kyrgyzstan, and he is the Minister of Transport and Communications, and um, he will give us some information about what is happening in the, on the transport side in connectivity. And you have uh, seven minutes. Okay. It should show up here. Good day, dear colleagues, friends, and all the participants uh, of this special session. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude uh, to the U European Union and especially Commissioner Madame Yurpinainen for organizing this wonderful event and dedicated to Central Asia Global Gateway Perspective. This year, we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the cooperation and partnership between the Kyrgyz Republic and the European Union. Ever since the bilateral and the regional cooperation with the EU and the EU states intensified and broadened, and now it covers almost all areas of mutual interest. The bilateral partnership agreement with Kyrgyzstan, uh, the EU strategy on Central Asia adopted in 2019 and many other mechanisms allowed us to further enhance our political, economic, social and other areas of cooperation. Last year, in November 2021, Bishkek hosted the first EU Central Asia Economic Forum on the level of the heads of government. The outcomes of this forum provided a further impetus to our regional cooperation in the fields of transitioning to a green, sustainable climate neutral economy, digitalization and creation of a sound business environment. We believe that the new global gateway strategy of the EU will help us to further strengthen and advance connectivity in terms of transport, education, health, digitalization and other fields. In this regard, we are looking forward to the upcoming connectivity EU CA conference this year. To tell you more about the history of our transport cooperation, uh, the foundation of the partnership between the Kyrgyz Republic and the European Union was laid back in 1991, when the European Commission, as the main mechanism of cooperation, developed TASIS program, mainly aimed at rendering technical assistance in Trelia to transport project. Further, on September 8, 1998, the Kyrgyz Republic signed the basic multilateral agreement on international transport for development of the transport corridor Europe, the Caucasus Asia, Traseca. The Kyrgyz Republic is interested in closer cooperation and development of interconnected, seamless transport corridors linking Kyrgyzstan with the Central Asian and European countries. Our goal is to maintain long-term cooperation with partner countries to develop the transport industry, build and reconstruct a network of viable international transport corridors to attract high quality investments from multilateral functional financial institutions in the infrastructure of our country, harmonization of the regulatory framework in accordance with the most high international standards. We aim to maintain a sufficiently high level of transport interaction and interconnectedness of transport infrastructure with the partner countries as well as with other countries of the world. An important task of the transport sector is the utilization of modern solutions of freight transportation, especially with the use of new technologies, automation of transport processes, digitalization, introduction of intellectual systems, and use of green transport that would minimize harm to environment. Viable international transport corridors that meet the highest international standards are a priority for us. 
Today, four out of six car corridors, the traffic corridor as well as the routes included in the network of European routes and the route of the highway uh, of the Asian highways pass through the territory of the Kyrgyz Republic. We also welcome uh, the development of use of other alternative routes connecting the Kyrgyz Republic and other Central Asia countries with the Europe. To ensure the conformity of, of our international transport corridors to the international standards, the Minister of Transport and Communications of the Kyrgyz Republic has been implementing 12 investment projects of construction and rehabilitation of trunk highways, and four other projects are under preparation. These projects are supported by international partners and are a part of the International Transport Corridors Network that I mentioned before. Due to the fact that Kyrgyzstan is a landlocked country and other numerous reasons, we attach a great importance to the development of international transport corridors. They serve not only as a natural link with other countries of the world, but also give a huge impetus to the development of the economy and tourism, increasing cargo turnover and passenger traffic. People and goods are able to move through corridors faster and more efficiently, which in turn supports business development, creates jobs, and has a direct effect on the improvement of the quality of life. At the same time, on the regional level, it is important to further engage in the fields of providing equal access to seaports, reduction of non-physical barriers along the transit countries, and generally facilitation of liberalization of international transportation. Today, the creation of digital transport corridors that will reduce travel time, minimize administrative costs, and transport demurrage. Digital, 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 should ensure that the most optimal routes and conditions of transportation are chosen, providing an opportunity for the use of electronic documents. A unified information environment will optimize the functions of the state regulatory bodies, including at a supranational level. This area, these areas require exchange of practices, both the positive and the problematic ones, including the risks that the partner countries have already faced. In this connection, we consider the initiative of the European side of the Global Gateway to be timely and important for strengthening the interconnectivity of the region with the EU countries, including in the transport sector. This strategy is of great importance for us, and we are open for discussion of joint digitalization and infrastructure projects. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and again, uh, really interesting to hear there about the interconnection, transport interconnection projects in the region and also the crossover with uh, digitalization, which is a very difficult word to say. So really interesting, uh, really in interesting information about the projects there. So thank you very much. And now we turn to our final speaker from Central Asia. He is from Kazakhstan and he is the chairman of the Agency for Strategic Planning and Reforms. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank you very much for European Commission to, for organizing this wonderful event. This exchange of ideas and views is very important, especially we see how the world is changing. We see new global challenges and we see that in the framework of these global challenges connectivity plays important role so we see that history shows us one more time that connectivity is important speaking about kazakhstan i would like to say that kazakhstan right now goes through uh, interesting time exciting time uh, in uh, March, our president announced political, modern, political reforms, and uh, these political reforms they aim to increase uh, democratization of our society, competition, and these uh, political reforms they will go hand in hand with economic reforms, which will be announced uh, by our president in September. Speaking about economic reforms, 
and uh, development of new model for our economic uh, for our economy i would like to say that we uh, devote special attention to increase our transit potential you know that kazakhstan is number 9 uh, country by its territory in the world and uh, it has big huge transit potential and uh, that's why uh, already for several decades we are taking efforts to develop several uh, economic corridors and here I would like to uh, speak about uh, what we call middle corridor. Middle corridor is an uh, international Trans-Caspian transport corridor, which actually goes from China through Kazakhstan, uh, through Caspian Sea to Baku, which is Azerbaijan, Georgia, and the Black Sea, or it can go through Caspian Sea to Iran and further through Turkey to Europe. And uh, I would like to say that starting from beginning, like if you go from east, from China, Kazakhstan actually has its own terminal, which uh, uh, has a capacity to uh, uh, send all uh, uh, all uh, uh, how it's called. Uh, 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 not people, um, groups, <laughs> containers, all containers through uh, from uh, southeast countries through terminal in Lan Yungan and to what we have uh, land, uh, land port which is called Hargos on the border of China and Kazakhstan and to manage this land port we actually attract uh, leading international transport companies and uh, also, uh, Kazakhstan spends uh, a lot of uh, uh, money, uh, billions of tenge uh, annually, to improve our infrastructure, uh, road infrastructure, which goes through uh, Kazakhstan, through connecting uh, East Kazakhstan with West Kazakhstan, and at the same time, these uh, roads they connect uh, also interconnect with regions, different regions of Kazakhstan internally. So we spend, uh, we uh, like we have separate program creating to create internal transport corridors as well and uh, when we go to the west of Kazakhstan uh, we have Aktau, Port Aktau which actually is the first one in the region to green to get a, a status of green port and uh, this uh, Port Aktau actually sends uh, containers containers further as I said in the beginning to other to other countries and uh, we see from 2013 that it's like the number of containers going through Port Aktau, the territory of Kazakhstan, uh, dou doubles uh, annually, which is a good, uh, good, good tendency, and it's going to be continued. And uh, we see that uh, also it's very important to increase um, uh, the speed that uh, this containers go through Kazakhstan, and to increase the speed. Uh, we have a separate program in Kazakhstan which uh, implements uh, modern digital tools uh, to manage, uh, to provide online manage management of this uh, transit uh, route going through Kazakhstan and also to increase uh, the speed that these uh, containers go through uh, um, our borders. And here also, when we speak about uh, 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 connectivity, uh, as I said, it's important to increase transport, like infrastructure connectivity, digital connectivity. It's also, uh, which actually will give a boost to increase uh, trade connectivity, which is very important uh, for small open economy like, like a Kazakhstan to increase uh, well-being of its people to provide sustainable, inclusive uh, economic growth in the long run. One more time, thank you very much for organizing this platform.
my time is <laughs> limited, so uh, I'm ready for questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I know it's very interesting there again to hear about some of the crossovers with, uh, you mentioned the green port and um, digital, using digital tools. So interesting to see how all these themes of the global gateway are interconnected in themselves. So that brings us to our final uh, speaker for this session. And here's Mr. Mark Bowman from the European Board of Reconstruction and Development. And, um, and I think you'll give us a slightly different tack, please, uh, where you'll, you'll tell us about what the EBRD's investment strategy is and how it's supporting these kind of um, activities. Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be speaking here today. And um, thank you very much to the Commission for, for organising this um, really important um, event. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about two things. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the role of the IFIs and the EBRD in particular um, in this initiative, um, and then talk in a little bit more detail um, about our work in Central Asia. And I'm um, uh, very pleased that so much of it has already been um, mentioned by, the, by earlier um, panellists. Um, we, we very strongly believe that the EBRD and other IFIs um, can be a very important implementing partner for the EU um, in terms of identifying and implementing flagship projects under the Global Gateway um, umbrella. Um, and we think we also have an important role in terms of linking the EU Global Gateway initiative to other connectivity um, initiatives. IFIs such as the EBRD um, play a crucial role helping to identify and fund bankable and sustainable projects. The work we do through project preparation, pipeline development, capacity building um, and um, implementation and um, I think one of the very unique things we do is combining um, investments with policy dialogue, um, the policy dialogue that can be extremely important. So for example, um, we all want to do more to crowd in the private sector. We know that in order to crowd into the private sector, um, having a stable um, uh, investment climate, regulatory reform is, is, is incredibly important. So the work we're doing helping countries to develop their regulatory sectors um, helps, helps to contribute. Um, in terms of working with other IFIs, um, all the IFIs have different skills and experience, but I think the, the critical thing is that given the scale of the global infrastructure gap, given the scale of the needs um, in this region, we all need to work together, um, identify synergies, streamline, coordinate, um, and uh, work together in order to take forward um, the connectivity uh, agenda. Um, now, the EBRD has been investing in Central Asia um, for 30 years, since the early 1990s, and we have a very strong presence on the ground um, through our network of resident offices um, in each country. Um, cumulatively, we've invested seven billion across our over a thousand um, projects. Um, and upgrading infrastructure is a very important strategic priority for us, um, of course, working in close cooperation uh, with, with, with others. Um, to give a few examples, so um, at the EU's request, the EBRD uh, has launched a study on sustainable transport connections between Europe and Central Asia, and this will assess existing and potential new corridors uh, to connect five Central Asian republics with the EU's um, transport uh, network. Um, and of course, the, um, as, as, as we've heard from, from previous speakers, um, connectivity between um, Europe and Central Asia um, is especially important given uh, current global um, events, the war in Ukraine, which has um, disrupted uh, other transport routes. Um, we know that the private sector is increasingly looking for more reliable and efficient alternative routes connecting Europe and Central Asia. And for example, through the, through the middle corridor that was um, mentioned earlier. Um, within this context, we are developing a set of criteria for proposing and prioritising the key actions and projects to enhance the transport sectors, um, as, as well as um, improving soft connectivity and the legal regulatory framework. Um, and as a major um, investor in Central Asia, Asia's transport infrastructure, um, very focused on regional and cross-border connectivity, and of course ensuring that projects comply with the highest standards. Um, to give you a few more examples, um, the EBRD, together with the Islamic Development Bank, um, is financing the Almaty Ring Road project, um, the largest public-private partnership project in the region to date. Um, another example is the Obigam Norabod Road project in Tajikistan. Um, this is a, a very important transport link, but also a project that will enhance climate resilience. 
um, and also an example of our ability to combine project and policy work. Um, so on this project, we are working very closely with the Minister, Ministry of Labour um, in order to, uh, to work to remove low labour code restrictions which currently prevent women's employment in the Tajik transport sector. Um, we're also working together with partner governments to speed up the delivery of a number of transport projects that advance both green and digital transition agendas. Um, for example, improvement of air transportation infrastructure across the region, um, which will significantly enhance connectivity and regional links, as well as air safety standards. Um, and of course, with regards to the railway sector, we promote market reforms by enhancing the role of the private sector, promoting competition and improving efficiency of rail cargo services, for example. Um, and we are currently investing in the Kazakh National uh, Rail Company. Um, of course, as we've heard, connectivity covers not just transport, but also digital climate and energy. Um, and on the climate and energy fronts, investments in renewables and decarbonisation, coupled with our policy dialogue, are at the core of our activities in Central Asia. We're, we're very proud that as a bank, over 50% of our investments last year were green um, investments. And again, to, to give an example, in um, Kazakhstan, uh, the EBRD has financed almost half of all renewable energy capacity, um, while also supporting the development of much needed skills um, in the sector. Um, we know that a key component of developing renewables is investment in network enhancements, not only facilitating the integration of renewables generation capacity, but also enhancing inter-regional connectivity. And again, we heard about the, um, the CASA 1000 um, project from, a, from an earlier um, panellist. Um, going forward, support for regional and cross-border activities remains a key focal point for us. And so pleased to hear from um, uh, all participants today um, highlighting the importance to us of, of this. Um, digital connectivity is also very important to our agenda and one of our strategic priorities. And we're currently supporting digitalization of the transport sector, um, such as promoting countrywide electronic toll collection systems in Kazakhstan. Um, and of course, very important in terms of the digital transition is um, ensuring a constructive dialogue between public authorities, the regulators um, and digital providers, and again, improving um, the investment climate. I know, that, I know that I'm nearly out of time, but just to um, uh, conclude, I want to say that we are absolutely committed to continuing to address the connectivity challenges in Central Asia um, through our investments and policy dialogue. Um, we know um, that the war in Ukraine has brought into sharp focus the importance of connectivity um, between Europe um, and uh, Central Asia, and we are committed to working in close partnership with the EU, IFIs, other development partners, and as such we view the Global Gateway as a crucial platform um, to further enhance that cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and I'd like to thank all the speakers for their very interesting interventions and how it's very interesting how these themes of green energy, transport, digital tools and digitalization are all interconnecting to improve connectivity both within the region and between Europe and the region. So it sounds like it's really interesting times to be involved in this topic. Now, I did say at the beginning that if you had questions, you could put them into the Slido app. And if I could ask the organizers to put up any questions we have. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we'll have time to actually deal with any of the questions, but I just wanted for you to see how interested people are and how there are many questions uh, coming in. Um, we saw that, uh, that digital was, was mentioned several times by panelists as an enabler of other topics that they were talking about. But because we have such, such a, a small amount of time left, I just want to go around the speakers quickly and ask, um, what is the one key point that they would like the audience to take away with them today? And we'll do that in the same order that, we, that the, order spoke, the speakers spoke in the beginning. But I'm going to leave the commissioner until last because the commissioner has the, has the honor of giving us the concluding remarks. So I would like to start with the, uh, His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister of Uzbekistan. So we only have sort of, if you could say in, in 30 seconds, what is your key point that you would like the audience to take away? 
Thank you very much. It's very difficult uh, to uh, <coughs> to explain such uh, quite complicated uh, issues. But uh, uh, once again, thank you for organizing such a very important platform for all Central Asian countries. And as we see, uh, uh, Central Asian countries gathering here to discuss many interesting issues, starting from uh, ecological program pro uh, problems, uh, start, uh, water use issues, and uh, logistic uh, connectivity and many others, educational, of course, issues. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, we have to learn uh, many lessons from uh, European experience. It's also it could be one of the goal of this platform. For example, now uh, three Central Asian countries are discussing to creating uh, so-called uh, Central Asian, some uh, similar system uh, to Schengen area, and we are going to create so-called uh, silk uh, visa regime. Okay. It's very interesting, I think. Okay, and, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, say, but... say, saying uh, about uh, the keyword, I think it should be connectivity because connectivity it means not only uh, transport connectivity, but also it's educational issue. It's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, allow us uh, to boost our economy. Anyway, uh, I think if we will uh, um, uh, define as a, uh, as a keyword uh, connectivity, it will be very. Correct, thank you. Okay, so that was excellent. I'm afraid we have so little time that when I go around and ask you for a key point, I, I'm looking for maybe a few words. So perhaps if I could go to the uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Tajikistan, just like two or three key words that you would like people to, to leave with. Really brief, if possible. The microphone should work. You don't have to do anything, it should just work. Okay. Thank you for your question, but for 30 seconds it is not a possibility to okay. make um, may attention to this very important question. Uh, during seven minutes I No, 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 oh. no, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, we are right near the end, so if you could just say two words on what you would like people to take away, I'm sorry. Uh, main question, it is future relation between Central Asia and European Union. Excellent. We will take that. Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, from uh, Kyrgyzstan, that's fine. Just Thank you. two words. Thank you. Relationship In my the opinion, the key word of uh, today's event is digitalization, as I said in my... Very good. <laughs> yeah. Speech. Okay, we'll take that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And, um, and then we have uh, Mr. Galiev. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I think connectivity is important for shared prosperity. Shared prosperity, digitalization, relationship with Europe. Very good, Mr. Mamman. So le less than 30 seconds. I mean, first of all... Two words, not um, even less than 30 seconds. Uh, Two priorities words. for the EBRD, green, inclusion and digital. We're committed to um, Central Asia and connectivity, uh, both regional and interregional, is essential for trade and investment. Okay, very interpretive use of two words. So with that, Commissioner, thank you so much for coming. Thank you all the panelists for coming. And I'd like to give the floor to the Commissioner for um, a short concluding remarks and to close the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this session. I, I personally found it very interesting. And um, the whole idea of the uh, Global Gateway Strategy is really to accelerate the green and digital transitions globally, but also in Central Asia. And I was very happy to hear that actually digitalization was raised by the um, representative of Central Asia, but also hydropower, energy and, and those um, uh, transport corridors. So I think all these issues actually you raised here are part of our Team Europe initiative. So the one regarding digital, but the other regarding uh, green transition. Um, I also am very delighted to have a representative of IFI here because this whole concept of Global Gateway is built on the partnerships. So that it's not only public financing, but it's also private financing through the IFIs. So that uh, we are able to achieve those sustainable development goals, which is the main framework for our partnerships also with, uh, with Central Asia. And last but not least, the role of the young people and education, which was raised by the audience. 
I think this is the central and the heart of our partnership also with Central Asia. Because without people, without young people, we don't have future. And that's why we have to also invest in powering of young people and, and invest in education so that we can have a sustainable and stable future also uh, in the future. So thank you for this very fruitful session and looking forward to our conference uh, on connectivity in Uzbekistan later this year. And I'm looking forward to continue our discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you all for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Siobhan, for leading us through this uh, session. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a half-hour break. We will resume here at 4.25, where we'll continue our exploration of the Global Gateway, this time through Africa. See you in a bit.